Hey friends, Ginny D here, and if this is your first time on my channel, then welcome! I make videos about D&D, including this point of view role-playing series to help writers and role-players develop their original characters and get a little practice with improvising responses. I will put the full playlist of POV videos in the cards in case you want to check out the others. Here's how it works. I portray an original fantasy character interacting with you, the viewer. I ask questions and leave space for you to respond from the perspective of your own character. There's a little countdown clock in the corner, so if you need more time, you can just hit pause. I know it's not October yet, but it became Halloween season for me at 12.01 a.m. on September 1st, so we're gonna go witchy for this one. Today, your character has come to see a witch about some potions. As always, if you would like a written list of the questions, that is linked in the description. And if you want to make your own response video to this, I have also included a link to the video file without background music. By this point, there are like 15 characters or something in the Ginny D cinematic universe, and if you think that's hard to keep track of, just imagine keeping track of all of the NPCs in a D&D game, or all of the characters in a novel. Oh wait, you don't have to imagine that? You do that? Perfect! Then you're exactly who needs to hear about World Anvil. This entire series is sponsored by World Anvil, which is run by an amazing couple, by the way, some of the sweetest humans I've ever met, cat people, naturally. And they are the only reason this series exists at all. World Anvil is a toolkit for world building. Whether you are a writer, a game master, a role player, or designing a world for any other reason, it has all of the tools you need and then some. Create articles for everything in your world, from cities to objects to historical events, and then index them and link them to each other, like your own personal wiki. They've got interactive nestable maps, family trees, character sheets for tabletop games, historical timelines, and that's not even a dent in the featured list. I keep World Anvil pages for a lot of my NPCs, including Morelia, featured in this video. I'll put a link to my World Anvil in the description so that you can see the site in action. And if you want to try World Anvil for yourself, you can create a basic account for free, or use the code Ginny to get a whopping 40% off of any annual membership. All right, let's go meet Morelia the Wood Witch. Morning. With you in a moment. Oh, it's you. That pixie's tongue ivy really did the trick. Can't thank you enough for your help with that. I suppose you're here for a potion. I'm sure I have something you could use. Actually, I have a clearance batch right now. Leftovers from last month. Buy one, get one. Ooh, how about this one? Potion of Diminution. You have to use it within the week, though, because it's getting pretty close to its expiry date. Ever been shrunk down very small before? Ooh, how about this little fellow? Potion of Water Breathing. Very useful if you have any seagoing journeys coming up. Hang on. Maybe this is a potion of heroism, actually? It blesses you and you get a bit hardier for a while. I'm not quite sure. Which one would be more useful to you, do you think? Breathing underwater or standing up to a little more bodily harm? I think Cremini may have peed in this bottle. I don't think this is a potion. Don't take this one. Ah, here we are. Potion of flying. The only thing is, since it's starting to get stale, it might wear off a bit early, which of course means you drop out of the sky. Are you afraid of heights? But what am I doing? You must have come for something specific. How about this? I'll make you a custom potion while you wait, and I'll throw in the clearance potions for free. Not the cat piss, though, I can use that. Perfect for potion of speed, you know. So, what kind of potion should I make for you? <laughs> what? Oh no, I can't do that. Not without three months and a thimble of fire snake blood spilt under the new moon. Are you crazy? No, no, there's got to be something else. Ah, now that I can do. Perfect. What do you need a potion like that for anyway? Any allergies I should know about? Some people have a sensitivity to certain ingredients. Myconid spores, say. Anything like that?
All right, noted. Ooh, I'll throw in some corpse flower mucus. Helps with the flavor, believe it or not. Surprising, considering the smell. Although, it can cause hair loss in some people. Perhaps not that. Do you have a particular flavor that you certainly like? I can make potions taste like pretty much anything. Beer, cake, roast pig, flowers, you name it. What's your preference? I can do that. This'll do the trick, but don't ask what's in it. There's some disgusting stuff in potions you don't want to know. Have you ever had a potion of hill giant strength? You know it has fingernails in it. That reminds me, if you ever come across a hill giant, I'm looking to restock on fingernails. Say, do you happen to have any bits and bobs from any monsters or beasts that you fought? Actually, that could be useful. I'll check my stores after this potion's done. Maybe you'll take some of that off your hands. All right, so, some of these ingredients depend on the drinker. Let's see, when was the last time you slept under moonlight? Ah, tears of a night hag then. I love sleeping in the moonlight. I never have nightmares when I do. What about you? Do you have nightmares often? Are you currently keeping a secret? You don't have to tell it to me. A simple yes or no will suffice. Understood. Secrets are so stressful. I'm always worried I'll let them slip by accident. I think for some people, it makes them feel trusted though. Do you like when people tell you their secrets? All right, last one. Were you your parent's first child? Thank you very much. I have two sisters, one on either side. I think that sort of thing can really affect us, how we relate to people. How do you think it's affected you? That smells mostly right. I suppose we'll know when you take it. Let's talk payment. I don't like to take coin when I make potions for adventurers. I'd much rather we strike some sort of deal for materials. Let's see what I'm on the hunt for. Ah, yes, weeping lace flower. I make a, a cream for calluses, very popular with local laborers. You know, farming and smithing and such can really do a number on the hands. Oh, should I throw some of that in with your order? How are your hands? Calloused or smooth? Well, Weeping Lace Flower grows out east. It's a bit late in the season for it now, though. Ah, how about Harpy's Feather? I used to have a deal with one that lived on the cliffs nearby, but that went sour, unfortunately. Everyone told me it would, but I can't help it. I just see the best in everyone. How about you? Are you suspicious, or do you give people the benefit of the doubt? Well, if that sounds like too much, though, I'm also nearly out of blue fever flax. That one rarely grows wild, but I haven't had any luck cultivating it in this climate. It tends to prefer the cold. Personally, I do better in the heat. Which do you prefer? Well, you've proven yourself trustworthy already with the love potion situation, so I don't mind sending you off with this one on credit. If you do come across any of those specific things, though, just bring them on back here. Oh, I'm not doing love potions anymore, by the way. Speaking of all that, I've learned my lesson. 
Have you ever learned a lesson like that, the hard way? Sticks with you, doesn't it? Well, I'll get these all packed up for you. Here you are. Best of luck with everything, and fingers crossed that the potion came out well. It's always a bit of a guessing game, isn't it? But I think a little mystery, a little surprise makes life more fun. Wouldn't you agree? I hope your journeys bring you this way again soon. Oh, and don't forget to give Cremini a scratch on the way out or he'll be very offended. Last time a customer ignored him, he tipped over a whole bottle of Phoenix Ash and then tracked it all around the cottage. Little paw prints everywhere. <laughs> Familiars. I hope you liked getting to know Morelia a little better. She is actually going to be one of my calendar girls this year, along with her familiar Cremini, who will be making a cameo, a cat meow, if you will, in the calendar as well. For those of you who are new around here, every year I produce a limited edition cosplay pinup calendar inspired by classic cheesy 40s and 50s pinup illustrations. This year's calendar will launch in November, so keep an eye out for that. Hope you enjoyed this video and let me know what kind of other point of view roleplay videos you would find useful in the comments.